listening to The Edge, everything bass fishing, coming to you worldwide from Megawin Kill Guard Studios. Welcome to Bass Edge Radio. That's right, Aaron, episode number 376, May 15, 2022. Indeed, Kurt. Welcome aboard. As always, Bass Edge Radio, MegaWare Keel Guard, first do it yourself keel protector, skeg guard, battery guard, right? All these guards need to be on your boat. We've said it numerous protection. times. Protection. Yes. Protection. protection. Yes, protection. And uh, all of that can be found on their website, keelguard.com. They have social media presence. Just cool stuff. Encourage everybody to check that out for the latest happenings with MegaWare KeelGuard. Kurt, I don't know about you. May 15th, year is flying by. I am getting ready for graduation. I can't believe I now officially have a senior, Maya, who will be going off to college. It, it suddenly hit me that she will uh, soon be a guest in our house and no longer a resident. And uh, just it's, it's crazy how time flies. I know kind of <laughs> along those lines, you're getting ready for uh, – for a bunch of invasions, right, at local lake levels with, yeah, with the camp. Yeah, totally do, man. Two weeks from now, you know, the uh, Pro Bass Youth Camp is beginning, so uh, lots of preparation, obviously, going on there. But um, it's one of those times a year, Aaron, that you've got up north, there's still fish spawning, smallmouth getting on the beds, still largemouth getting on the beds. But, man, you get in that mid to southern half of the U.S., it is totally post-spawn, right? Yeah, 100%. So, uh, 100%. It's, it's going to be a great talk today. We're going to have a great talk today about post-spawn fishing, a little bit still about that pre-spawn spawn, and specifically catching bigger fish this time of year. So uh, we, we've got a guy on tap later on in the show. It's going to be pretty exciting. He's led a couple of major events this year. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, some fish weighed more than um, my whole bag. But, so. <laughs> but before we get to that part, we're going to talk to a special guest, Aaron. We've had this segment. We'd like to get some feedback on how this is going for everybody. You know, we've had this new segment in the show since the January 1 episode this year. And every episode, we have had a special guest segment. And, uh, man, I'm really learning a lot and really feeling like we're bringing some additional solid freaking content to the listeners. What, what's your thought process on that? I agree. I mean, you know, been surprised a couple times on us like, okay, Kurt, where, where are we going with this? But then once you get into it, it's like, ah, those little nuggets that come out of it or whether it's a, a new piece of tackle a new piece of software just very enlightening and kind of getting away from you know the casting and cranking so to speak and kind of enlightening right. and broadening our right. horizons but you know what ultimately yep. the listeners decide and hopefully we get some some feedback on that and we'll make corrections accordingly yeah absolutely so be sure to check into that bass edge instagram page and facebook page keep that feedback coming because we want to keep this show going for you all and making it the best it can absolutely be. Aaron, talking about keeping the show going, here we go. That special guest segment coming up next. Nitro Performance Bass Boats. Get pro-level performance with the Nitro Z18, the official boat of Major League Fishing. The Z18, with its nimble handling and versatility, sports many of the features in the larger boats in the line, like a Guardian Live Well, a heavily insulated cooler, dual 8-foot rod storage, and our smooth and fast NVT hull. Every Nitro boat is laid out to do one thing very well, catch fish. Enormous front decks up to 45 square feet on the Z21 allow maximum mobility when battling unruly bass and feature low-profile gunnels for ease of skipping, pitching, flipping, or landing fish. Nitro Performance Bass Boats, pure fishing machines. Well, Aaron, this year in this segment of the show, we continue to knock on the door of products and industry news our listeners should be aware of. This segment of our May 15 episode is no different with a few live transducer accessories out there on the market, several of which we've talked about before during episodes. We've never really dove in deep to them, but, uh, you know, some of those examples you can find out there online, the right height turret, many others. Today, we get familiar with the company All Aboard Marine, and we have the owner with us today, David Hahn. Let's dive into these live sonar accessories and why they're so important. David, 
thanks for bringing your experience to Bass Edge. Oh, you're welcome, guys. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm really looking forward. It's a good time. David, I'm curious, you know, you have an interesting story that I uh, would like for you just to touch on with the listeners and, and kind of enlighten us on the origination of All Aboard Marine and really what was the, the need that you saw to provide consumers a solution to? Well, as a, a machinist, I grew up in a machine shop, so I'm a problem solver. Um, I designed the All Aboard Boarding Ladder back in 2010, so I've always had kind of that marine industry background. And then when Live Sonar came out, I got on the water with it, and the first time I was looking at a fish and I moved the trolling motor, I was like, well, this isn't being utilized to its full potential at all. Yeah, like, where'd it go? <laughs> right, I mean, I've the, been there a thousand times, yeah. Yeah, I mean, before sonar, you know, before the live sonar, we always just went out fishing, and, you know, we got in about the right area, and yada, yada, yada. Well, now we spend all this money so we can target these fish. Well, it's kind of, it's hard to stay on target if you can't see the target that you're aiming for. And that's where the All Aboard Marine products really come into play at because it really focuses on getting the most out of this investment because all of everybody knows electronics, they're a healthy investment for the front of our boat these days. Uh And without the All Aboard system, you're only getting about maybe 45, 50% of the possibilities of what you just purchased. And that's where the All Aboard Marine comes in. At. Very cool, David. All right. You know, I, I visited your website, allaboardmarine.com. I was able to check out, uh, you know, some of the products and, and systems. Really, this is a whole system that you've got going here with this particular accessory. Uh, there's so many options to your units that they provide. Let's try to briefly speak to each one of them, kind of let the listeners understand what is available in this market. First, you've got the all sync and the ability to manually disconnect the sink on the water and use the all aboard accessory as you know a manual adjustment to direction of the sonar can you speak a little bit to that and how that particular piece or segment of the unit operates oh, absolutely so what the all sync does is anyone that's been on the water with forward facing sonar knows that you know, with it on the trolling motor shaft, it is a very valuable tool. And that's not the end all. You have to be able to manually manipulate that transducer at some point in some fishing conditions because all fishing conditions are different. So with the all sync system, you now have the ability to choose and modify your fishing presentation using your live sonar depending on the elements that you're battling of that given day. If it's windy, you're using spot lock a lot. You unsync it, you manually point your transducer where you want, and you focus when you're fishing. If you're in a calm day and your trolling motor, your your boat control is on point and you're just out there fishing, well, it's just a fl- simple flip of a switch. It gets you on the shaft control, but with an extra level of clarity because now your transducer isn't on the shaft of the trolling motor, so you don't have the interference that you would sometimes get with the trolling motor head. Very cool. So it works just like from a directional standpoint as if it was on your trolling motor shaft, but it's disconnected from the trolling motor shaft on the all aboard marine pole. And then, you know, if you want to manually disconnect it, you can manually disconnect the sinking with the trolling motor and shoot it anywhere you want in the water. So that's pretty cool. Now, from my understanding in in the system, you have the all scan system, which I think you use the term target system technology. This is really unique to your product. Tell us how that particular element works okay yeah so our, our tst our target scan technology what that gives you the option to do it's very similar to if you've got your power poles down you're fishing in the back of a cove and you're just fan casting so what that target scan technology allows you to do is set a parameter and a speed of how far your transducer is sweeping And how fast it's sweeping. So it's sweeping on its own. So you're not having to push a button or anything. You're setting a parameter of how uh, it's going to sweep and the speed of the sweep. That's pretty interesting. So now you don't have to do anything with your feet, your hands. You can just run the trolling motor and fish. And this unit is basically sweeping 
the water out in front of you or to the side of you based on your setting. Is, am I understanding that correctly? Th- that is exactly correct. So what that does is the target scan technology, and it's settable so that if you wanted to sweep like a 10 degree, say you're running a rattle trap or a jerk bait or something, you're really covering some water down a bank, and you're just mainly looking ahead of you, and you're gotcha. wanting to see your targets as they're coming, you can set this at a 10 degree window at like the one o'clock to two o'clock position and just let it automatically scan in that one o'clock to two o'clock position. Now, if you get down that bank, you flip where you've seen a lot of good stuff, you want to flip around and do the same thing coming back. Well, all it is is just a matter of turning off the TST, flipping the boat around, turning the TST back on, setting the window at your 10 o'clock and your 11 o'clock, and then it's going to continually scan or sweep back and forth at that point up and down the bank the whole time you're completely hands-free fishing wow yeah that's almost cheating that's like when kurt (laughs) bowls against me you know david i mean he puts the bumpers up and then i gotta try and you know use use the regular system so anyway but uh hey david that is that is really neat one other thing that i wanted to get your opinion on you know a lot of times when i'm in rough water I can sometimes have difficulty using live sonar technology. How can you help me overcome this? Well, I mean, and that's one of the things that the all aboard system really helps focus on because if you're in rough water, boat control is definitely going to be an issue. And having your transducer on the all aboard system, that gives you the ability to not have to worry about boat control. That takes boat control out of the equation. Because as we all know, these new trolling motors, they've got their spot lock feature, you know, pretty well dialed in. And us as fishermen, we kind of hone in on maybe one or two things that we can do well at a time while we're fishing. So you're not always going to be able to do your boat control or your, um, you know, your forward facing and catch fish things along them lines. So what this does is it puts it on a much stabler platform it allows you to spot lock it allows you to move back into the back of your boat back off the front of nose of your boat so you're more in the middle um gives you a lot solider stance and it allows you to still see your sonar and especially with the tst the target scan technology when you've got that engaged you can come all the way back and fish from the console and your transducer is going to be doing its thing so it really helps you utilize in that rough water, gets you a good footing on the deck of your boat where you're nice and comfortable so you can just focus on fishing. Yeah. And, and the transducer, you know, doesn't come out of the water because there is an adjustment on that pole. Is that correct? That is correct. So we we run about six to eight inches of adjustment of height and our bottom shaft is actually disconnectable. So if you're fishing a lake like, say, Gunnersville, things along them lines where heavy grass, things along them lines, your live sonar isn't really working because of the grass cover and whatnot. It's as simple as uh, loosening the adjustment screw, sliding the lower shaft out of the all-scan system, and then you can put it up in a clip and not have the extra drag coming through the water as you're fighting the grass things along them lines or if you're in big that's beautiful i was just thinking you know i have my unit active target and i was at ross barnett a few weeks ago Uh, tons of stumps out there in that lake and it was so shallow i wasn't using my 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 active target as much and i was fishing shallow vegetation and Everything just started getting hung on it. I saw people break their uh, live sonars, all their transducers off, and and this alleviates all that. So it protects the investment, only puts it in the water, but yeah, you don't have to remove everything off your boat in an event that you may or may not use it, and you can use it as you wish while it's sitting there. So that's a great setup, David. Lastly, materials on the unit. You know, you've got some units that are made out of plastic and some aluminum, and and what what's your basis for making a uh, accessory that's going to be long-lasting? So consumer, you know, doesn't have problems in rough water, running around, having this, you know, this accessory hanging off off the front of the boat and how do you work that well i mean everything we do is i use everything high grade aluminum i do have a certified welder on staff that does all my welding fabrication for me so everything is le- is produced at a very high level of manufacturing um, we use no plastic parts except for we do use delron bushings for support of the transducer shaft Um, including a bushing within 12 inches of the transducer. And what that does for you is that gives you the ultimate shaft stabilization so that, 
you know, whenever you're in rough water, things along them lines, you're running through rough water, things like that, you've got a support bushing within 12 inches of that transducer. So not only when is it on the deck and you're running 50 miles an hour across a pretty rough lake, you don't have that transducer shaft just bouncing against your trolling motor, things along them lines. There's no extra support. Everything's all manufactured into our mount. And on that high quality aluminum platform, it really gives you the highest level of quality and support to really get the clearest picture out of your sonar because your transducer is not bouncing yeah super cool aaron we talked earlier this year about you know when we saw folks rigging their boats and having two live sonars right. and this is the deal right now you got uh you know this all aboard marine system and you've got your live scan and you've got the different ways to utilize it whether it's all sync or all scan and and now i can also potentially put and and i think this is what several guys that are really into this live scope and on the on the pro tours are doing they're utilizing the perspective or the um what's the name of the other one uh lorenzo scout 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 and perspective on their trolling motor shaft so they're able to get the best of both worlds scout and perspective a unit on their trolling motor the live target or the live scope on this accessory system like the all aboard marine and all of a sudden we have more information that we ever thought possible. <laughs> and, and Aaron, you have no excuse not to catch fish. That, that's right. That's Limit, right. Limits all the time. Yeah. All just, the time. Just, just, men just mental bandwidth is all I have <laughs> limits of. <laughs> <laughs> all and right, that dude. is one thing that you know that is one thing that's unique to the all aboard system all of our mounts come with a built-in perspective mode bracket so um as you were kind of touching base on the two sonars you kind of get that all built in with the all aboard system very cool david tell the listeners how they can you know learn more about your product and uh, just kind of give them the the overall scoop if if they're interested in this type of accessory how they could get in touch with all aboard marine uh well you can go to our, our website allboardmarine.com that's a great place to get some pictures get kind of some links to youtube videos we've got a contact form on there where you can contact us along with our shop phone number um, you also can check us out on Facebook or Instagram. We do post daily or by bit by daily with, you know, new products, you know, fish, some people use are that are catching using our system, things along them lines. Um, you can truly drop us a message through messenger on their YouTube video, you know, and you can give us a call, you know, we've got a shop line. There's somebody there, you know, eight to four every day. I'm generally there longer, but, uh, <laughs> you know, there's somebody there to answer the phone eight to four, um, you know, and that's generally, we, we try and make it very easy to get a hold of us. Very cool. Aaron, what's your take, buddy? G give me give me your closing thoughts on the electronics, the style of accessories. You know, we had a, a uh, small brief discussion on omnidirectional sonar before we started taping today. Anglers, if you've never heard of omnidirectional sonar and you want to know kind of the next step in all of this uh, electronics madness, you need to Google that up. Aaron, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think what David, uh, and hats off to you, David, with All Aboard Marine and what you've created. Is, is essentially inst having instead of having to spend two hundred thousand to get a uh, you know omnidirectional sonar like they're using in the saltwater <laughs> market, you know you put something that's way more affordable. And you know, Kurt, to go back, I don't know if you remember, it's probably been two or three months ago. I sent you a link that our uh, good friend Pete Pons had did yes. on a social media yes. post on this product, and I'm like, man, this seems like the real deal. So to uh, see that come to fruition and now have David join us, I'm I'm pretty excited. Yeah, it's super cool, David. Thanks again for being with us here on Bass Edge radio everybody stay tuned coming up next is our featured angler spotlight this is flw tour angler matt reed i'm flw tour angler pete ponds i am bass pro tour angler stephen browning i am david dudley 2019 angler of the year stay tuned for more bass edge radio Know the importance of protecting your investments, so why use anything else other than the original and toughest DIY keel protector for your boat? MegaWare Keel Guard. Grinding sand, abrasive rocks, and concrete ramps are no match for our exclusive contoured edge and patented technology. MegaWare Keel Guard keel protectors are made tough and made to stick. Their do it yourself installation takes less than an hour, providing the longest lasting, most dependable keel protection for your boat. Guaranteed for life. 
developed specifically by boat builders, offering the best keel protection in the industry. Also from MegaWear Keel Guard, Skeg Guard, Flex Step Pro, and Pontoon Guard. So give your boat the performance edge. Put on the protection the pros pick. MegaWear Keel Guard. Aaron, excited to have a first-time guest here on Bass Edge Radio, but maybe one of the top five guests we've ever had in catching double-digit bass. And we've had some had some pretty phenomenal anglers on Bass Edge Radio throughout the years. And totally awesome how he's able to turn out these double-digit fish, especially for guide clients, man. He's a recent Toyota Series winner at Lake Texoma this past April. Longtime friend of mine. Welcome to the show. I'm calling him the Big Bass Magician at Hill Country Hammer, Texas Guide. Professional angler, Rick Harris. Joy to have you on Bass Edge, Rick. What's up, dude? I'm excited to be here. I've been listening to you and Aaron for years. When I first started getting into bass fishing, this is the only podcast I could find, and I listened to almost every episode, so it's really a pleasure to be on. Well, it's a joy to have you on, Rick, and I felt like after uh, Kurt's introduction there, there ought to be an opening act or some band that's going to you know, <laughs> open for you. So anyway. Actually, Rick, Rick used to play in a band, Aaron. He used to travel... Well, I'll say the world, many, many countries playing in a band, so uh, it might be just appropriate. Rick, what do you think? Can you bring out the old band in you? Yeah, I mean, uh, maybe if we get some money involved. (laughs) <laughs> maybe some, you know, I got a you like know, a truth or dare, maybe. Yeah, I, I got a rider. I got to send you guys. So I have all the you know goodies in the green room and all that. But yeah, no, Kurt, I'm kidding. We never, Kurt needs never a handler. He likes prepping for the green rooms when he does all of his interviews. <laughs> so anyway, but hey, Rick, no, again, just thrilled to have you on. Checking out your Instagram page is is pretty fun. I mean, as Kurt alluded to there in the introduction, I mean, just lots of tremendous fish, big bass, good times. You know. Also, just want to throw out congratulations on your Toyota Series win there on Texoma last month. I guess I've got to ask, is it more satisfying to guide a client to a double-digit bass or win a Toyota Series event? Surprisingly, they're kind of on the same level of that excitement because as a tournament angler you know every single one of us strive to win that's what we're there to do and when it happens it's unbelievable and then to put somebody on a double digit that's never caught one is just as exciting i mean they're freaking out i'm freaking out you're shaking (laughs) and and a lot of these double digit fish we're looking at them we're sight fishing sometimes you might be on the fish an hour sometimes you might be on the fish two hours or sometimes it's 15 minutes so, you know, there's a bunch of adrenaline going, and it's it's almost about the same. That's super cool, man. We're going to get into how you catch those double-digit fish and your success in that part of your business and in the guide service there. But let's first, let's dive into that Toyota Series win. It's only the second time you ever were at Texoma, I'm pretty sure. And, um, dude, coming out against, obviously, in that division of the Toyota Series, a lot of East Texas, North Texas, you know, Oklahoma, Hammers, been in, you know, on these lakes hundreds of times, right? How did your practice go and what was your anticipation going into that one day shootout after two days were canceled due to weather yeah uh i've only been there twice but it felt like a normal texoma practice you know i had a day i didn't catch a fish and then i had a day i caught almost 20 pounds and then every other day was just kind of two or three fish but they were kind of the right ones and i developed the pattern shallow you know saw some fish spawning temperatures were rising it felt like fish were just coming up so I knew where the fish were going. So I felt like I had a good practice on idea what the fish were doing. And then the whole two-day cancellation, in my mind, was kind of, for me, was good because it simplified everything. You know, when mm. you practice for, you know, two- to three-day tournament, you have a lot of spots. You have a lot of options. Your mind game, you know, you, you got to be on point. And this just kind of simplified things. You know, I only had three rods on the deck and uh, just went fishing and tried to get five big ones. And that's what happened. You bring up a good point, Rick. When when you talk about cancellations like that, and in this particular case, it sounds like you were mentally and emotionally prepared and, and used that to your favor. But curious to know, are there things that you do or employ to stay focused throughout a tough day of fishing after encountering, you know, such things as a cancellation, you know, obstacles of boat pressure, needing to perhaps change tactics and still come out victorious? Yeah, and that that's just the 100% mental deal. I mean, you just got to stay focused and just know that anything can happen at any time. You know, it takes sometimes about 10 to 20 seconds to put a giant fish in the boat. 
So if you have 10 to 20 seconds, you can catch a giant and just turn your whole day around. And, you know, I've been on the water so much in the past three years that I've seen it happen numerous times. So I'm just confident and comfortable with changing a bait or, or hitting a spot I haven't hit this before because I know it can happen that quick. Well, yeah, and that's, I, that's I'm one. sorry to interrupt there, Kurt. I want to ask one yeah. more uh, question, follow up on that too, Rick. Would you agree that, it, and Kurt, feel free to jump in on this as well. It can also take about 10 to 20 seconds to wreck your world mentally to where you go down a rabbit hole that is really hard to come back from, you know, that kind of derails the rest of your day. So I, I think that perception and perspective, you know, that you just mentioned there is critical. Yeah. I mean, you can lose a fish and, you know, it, it could wreck your day or you could run to a spot, you know, 20 minutes and someone's sitting right on where you want to fit. But experience, and, and that's happened to me so many times that it's part of the game. And once you wrap your head around that, that is part of the game. It's going to happen to you again. It happens to everyone out there. And just to keep going from it and mentally block it out. You know, I think it's just as important as figuring out that to figuring out the bat. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, Rick. Always glass half full, right? I mean, that's always been your approach since I've known you, and um, that's that's the approach that it took to win this event. If people don't know, you know, you got five bites in that five keeper bass, right? And yeah. um, I would bet ninety percent of the field, or ninety percent of all fishermen, going through the day having three bass with a couple hours to go would have mentally checked out, like lost focus, lost desire, lost that positive outlook. You know, they, they just would have thought their day was over. But I think, you know, those these kinds of things, these wins happen when you keep that positivity rolling. Because whether you've caught 30 bass and need to cull up another pound or, or caught three bass and need two more keepers, it's the same concept. If you don't keep that mental spirit alive uh and positivity alive and and thinking that um you know things can get better and and you can you know turn it around or or get even better than you were then that's what creates champions and and i feel like that's what kind of embodies what you have been able to do and i think it translates not only into your tournament fishing but you're guiding as well. So so let's talk about that a little bit too, Rick. As a full-time guide there in Texas, you see some of the same obstacles on a daily basis in that line of work and still putting clients on fish consistently. Does that help you translate that into your tournament competitions as well? And, and maybe you could just elaborate a little bit on some, some of those things that you see out there from a guide perspective that makes you turn your tournament results into better than maybe you, you thought that you could have done at a certain time or another. Yeah, it really translates to tournaments. And then the tournament stuff translates to guiding. It kind of goes back and forth both ways. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, we've been, we've been out here on Lake Ivy and it's, uh, I mean, every day there's a ton of boats out there. So mentally you got to be prepared to just deal with a lot of boats everywhere. And, and then on this lake, there's plenty of, this is weird saying, there's plenty of 10 pounders out there. I mean, it is crazy to say that, but there could be one right around the corner. The other day, actually, we were coming in, we we're coming in, you know, about to load the boat. And I was uh, right by the ramp. I mean, I was 50 yards away from the ramp. No, nah, probably closer than that. I was probably 50 feet away from the ramp. And there was a 10 pounder spawning on a bed and we caught it on the way in. Oh my so, God. <laughs> I, I know there's boats loading up. Like, are you guys on one? You know, we're sight fishing for it. We catch it while like four boats are loading up and that, and that just shows, I mean, just anything can happen. I mean, if you just give it a hundred percent every time you're going to have success, you know, it's going to happen. So just keep going, keep throwing, keep looking until that boat's on the trailer. Man, Rick, that's a great outlook. Let's take a pause in the interview. We're going to power pull down for a message from our sponsors. Rick, hang right there. We'll return talking about how Rick targets and catches big bass consistently right here on Bass Edge Radio. Patented in 2000, perfected over years of testing and real-world punishment, the Power Pole is the ultimate shallow water boat positioning tool. Swift, Power Pole deploys in seconds from anywhere in your boat. Virtually silent, Power Pole won't spook wary fish. Secure in strong currents or gusting winds in up to 8 feet of water. Engineered to take it with a lifetime unconditional replacement guarantee on the spike. Power Pole, swift, silent, secure. Visit PowerPole.com to find a dealer near you. 
Bass Edge Radio presented in part by Mercury Marine. Go boldly returning with MLF Toyota Series Angler Rick Harris in the featured angler spotlight. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Rick, kind of changing focus from the first half of the interview. We talked a little bit more about tournaments and uh, your success there. Now we're going to talk about all these double digit bass you've been able to put clients on for many years and, and catch yourself for that matter. When you were learning the craft and uh, becoming, you know, the great angler that you are, Rick, you've guided clients this spring to a number of big bass and, and personal best fish. I saw one even eclipsed in over 14 pounds. Freaking amazing. What fishing patterns usually lead you to being able to target these big fish? So, you know, most of these big fish are caught early in the year, pre-spawn and spawn when, you know, they're the biggest they're going to be all year. And that's what we target. You know, the guide service I'm partnered with, Hill Country Hammer Guides and Outfitters, Jared Poole, we've kind of developed this, we call it Chase the Bite. And what we do is we start off where the fish are spawning first in Texas, and that's usually South Texas. So we spend, you know, a few weeks in South Texas just targeting big fish spawning or pre-spawn and uh, putting our clients around that enough, you know, it's going to happen. You're going to see these big fish. And then we just follow the spawn up the state because Texas is so big. They can spawn in January in South Texas and late May in North Texas. So you can follow the spawn throughout Texas and that's what we do. And just, you know, it's almost like a hunting trip when we're sight fishing. You know, the fish are bedding. We have these big platforms on our boats. We, you know, we're a few feet above our boats and you can see far. And it's a hunting trip. I mean, we just focus on one fish. We focus on a 10 or better and we go look until we find it. And when we find her, you know, all our chips are in and we try to catch that fish. As you mentioned, so many great bodies of water in Texas. What are, uh, I, I guess, some of your favorites and what would be your suggestions for, you know, Bass Edge listeners? to visit yeah so my favorite lake is probably amstead del rio that's where i lived for three years that's where kurt guided for years and actually you know big thanks to kurt because he actually got me into guiding a few years ago he's the one that pushed me to do it and do it full time so that's a cool story and kurt i really appreciate that man and well i saw potential and what you had to offer people and, and your clients and i'm so stoked it's worked out man and uh, we're here talking about it on Bass Edge Radio. <laughs> Just, uh, Kurt's new name is going to be Mr. Miyagi from Karate Kid. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, he called me Young Grasshopper all the time. But, yeah, some of my other favorite lakes, I like, uh, you know, Choke Canyon. I know uh, Bass Edge filmed, uh, filmed a couple of shows down there yeah. years ago I remember watching. Great place. Great place. Yeah, that's one of my favorite anywhere with grass. But, you know, Ivy, of course, there's a ton of giants here. It's been on the map for the past couple of years, and everybody's been coming down. So, it, I mean, it's world class. I mean, I think we've caught 32 over 10 pounds in the past few weeks here. Holy so just, smokes. I know. It's insane. And then, you know, of course, a big pond in East Texas, Sam Rayburn. I love that lake, too. So Texas is just full of lakes. And there's a lot of little sneak holes with giants in them you can hit. But, you know, I suggest people to come down, of course, you know, pre-spawn to spawn if they're searching that big one that February to April time, you know, for those big ones. But pretty much in Texas all year. I've caught 10-pounders in January, August, July, in the fall. It's just They're everywhere down here. You just got to be around them. And Rick, real quick on this early spring scenario that, that you're mentioning, I know you said you have the platforms, the elevated platforms and that, you know, with the rage and forward facing sonar, does that come into play in this particular time of year, you know, that you're doing this or is it more, uh, you're, you're just, you know, on the trolling motor screaming down the bank, literally sight using your vision? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm using the, I guess the original live scope, which is your eyes and I'm, we're just strictly looking for them, but you know, Jared was talking about last year at Allen Henry, you know, it's real deep there and the fish would pull off the bed and he'd follow them with that uh, forward facing sonar. He'd follow them, see where they go, watch them come back. So that thing is definitely a tool in two foot of water to 60 foot of water year round. That's pretty cool, Rick. That's such an amazing piece that obviously we talk about a lot here on Bass Edge with forward-facing sonar. And interesting to hear your guide partner there, Jared Poole, using it from a sight fishing perspective. So that's oh, yeah. totally, totally well, It's even more up. amazing that you caught 40 <laughs> over 10 in, what would you say, a few weeks? I mean, people are lucky if they yeah. would ever catch that in their lifetime, let alone a couple of weeks. Yeah, it was like 32 of them, three over 13 uh, some t- you know, 12, a bunch of 10s. I mean, it, it, it's wild. 
It is so wild. It's an interesting concept here when you're chasing the bite. I think that's really cool. Probably not something a lot of services offer to be on the best lakes from January through May in that pre-spawn, spawn time frame. You know, a lot of people just don't have the ability to go for a couple weeks at a time and maybe hit the lake just right or hope that they hit it right. If you could give Bass Edge listeners some of your thought process on when does this all come about? Are you seeing it moon cycles playing a large factor? Is it just strictly water temperature related when, you know, all this time that you're spending on the water, obviously you're seeing some of these peak periods, right? Are you able to determine how those peak periods come about? Is it just strictly, like I mentioned, air temperature, which of course would lift the water temperature or is it moon phase or have you, have you been able to pattern any of that yeah it, it's still fishing it's crazy it's day to day and you know and it's everything it's the water temp it's the warmer nights it's the moon phase you know oh, i've wind. seen it where, i know in texas wind can play a huge factor in sight uh, fishing too so yeah it's been crazy windy but you know to the listeners i'll explain the perfect day you know, the perfect day that I would look for would be that water temperature is starting to hit 60. You know, maybe in the morning it's 59, 58, but in the afternoon it's starting to hit 60, 61, and uh, you want a hot, bright day. You know, the temperatures are rising and uh, a full moon. That is probably the most picture perfect thing you can have to spawn uh, to go look for sight fish. And it doesn't always happen that way. So, you know, anytime you got a nice day where you can see there's going to be fish up, you know, I feel like fish are like us. When they want to go, they go. Moon phase temperature helps, but I've seen them spawn in 56 degree water with clouds and wind. And then I've been catching them out here with cold nights, cloudy, windy. You don't see as many, but you still see some. Like we talked about earlier, there's always a chance. Just go, you know, and just cover water. We call it window shopping. Just cover water, look, <laughs> you know, just, like just, just look for them. And, you know, because not, not everybody can get out, you know, on the water every day like I can. So, you know, like I said, those are the perfect conditions. But if you have one of those conditions, you know, no wind, a warming night, a full moon, if you have one of them, you got a big chance of seeing some. So, Rick, I've caught one double digit fish in my life, uh, and it happened to be on a Texas lake. I've been fortunate to have, you know, some in the eight and nine pound range, but only only one double digit. So, you've got them dialed in. So, I'm going to call you and, and we're going and, and wherever, you know, because you're getting to spend the time on the water, you know where they're at. What are we going to target those with to help me eclipse and, and get another double digit mark on a bass so that I can claim that victory? How are we going to do that? So, early in the year you know if we're at choke canyon we'll maybe be doing a little bit of sight fishing but a lot of just covering water in that grass early springtime in the grass you know chatter baits probably the best thing to throw maybe some texas rigs slow worms and uh you know traps always good but that's how we target them there and then pretty much through the rest of the time we're doing it we're just sight fishing and we only have you know just a couple of baits you know we have something big to put on the bed that really aggravates them we have something that's you know like a craw just that we can see you know i like white something like that and then we kind of get sneaky on them and throw something small like a little drop shot or a little swim bait or something like that but it's pretty simple you know when you're bed fishing for these big ones i like a large bait a bait i can see and something small and it's more on the mood of the fish than the bait in my opinion very well you are you using obviously when you're drop shot maybe you're using some more finesse type line and or, or you pretty much big line all over the time you know all over the place do you use braided line at all how, how do you how do you decide uh, obviously you're targeting this ginormous fish a log yeah. chain <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. after exactly. After, you've, so, after you've window shopped <laughs> i like that after you've done the window shopping and you've picked the fish that uh looks like it's 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 the one that you're wanting to target you know do you got to go big line or or sometimes it's just a complete rodeo on like eight pound test yeah so it it depends on the situation tournament situation everything you know fluorocarbon i like to catch them on braid around cover it just gives you the biggest percentage of getting them in the boat but tournament situation i'll do whatever i can to make them bite with clients 90 percent of the time it's braid especially gotcha. here because there's a there's a lot of cover i mean we're fishing for these fish and trees all and then on top of that all the trees are covered in zebra mussels so it's like a double whammy, but, and, and, and we got time. We got all day 
for that fish. So we got time to get used to the braid and everything like that. And yeah, I used a big flipping stick, you know, Art Gunnersville Special. It's a 7-Eleven heavy, which I use for punching grass. And I'm using that to catch bed fish with 65-pound braid and usually like a five to six hot uh, FTP high boost hook heavy duty so we're, nice. we're using the biggest tackle you can for these fish just because it one you know it helps the client because they can set the hook and it that hook is in there and they and they can handle that fish because the fish wants to get in those trees and they can kind of manhandle that fish to the net so uh last question on this before we go to our listener question as far as time spent on a fish that maybe you had to leave what's the longest your clients fishing for this what you perceive to be ginormous bass you know, five, six foot deep in the water, whatever it is. And uh, how long have you stayed on a fish and just had to leave? And does that happen often or, or how does that work out? Because yeah. eventually the client's got to be like, oh, dang, I just did, the fish wouldn't bite. You know, you can't do anything yeah. about it, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and there's signs. I mean, you can, you know, I, like I said earlier, I, I spent hours on fish, days on fish. And then I've spent two flips and they bite you just kind of look for signs on what the fish is doing if the fish is leaving and staying gone for a long time probably need to leave but if it gives you signs you know if the buck's there he's active if she's kind of you know off looking at it if she comes up to the bed you know i just look for signs but you know sometimes those signs keep you there for hours and sometimes you know it's five minutes i can't imagine you looking at your client just going that old girl's just not ready we're going to have to move yeah. on. And your client's like, oh, crap. <laughs> but it, yeah. So, I mean, the other day, I, I guess it was one of the last days I was at Ivy and stuff. We uh, found one that was the biggest one I've seen. I don't know how big it was, but she just wasn't ready. She was just big circles, gone forever. Never mm. saw a bed, never saw a buck, and we, and we had to leave. And that was definitely heartbreaking, but. Part of the when game. you do catch it, when you spend that time to work them and see how they act, and that's the fun part. You know, it is fun going up to a fish, making two flips, and it bites them instantly and getting them <laughs> right, a boat. Right. I mean, that's, that's fun. I, I mean, I love it. Yeah. It's great. But to sit there and watch the fish, watch the buck rack, watch the fish rack, watch the fish come in, check it out, nose down, and how they act, that's fun. And then when you get that fish in, it's more rewarding. Yeah. Animal Planet on a boat right there. That's what that is. Exactly. I wish like, you know, that Blue Planet on Netflix or National Geographic, I wish they'd do something on bass spawning. That'd be, that'd be the coolest thing. Have a bunch of underwater footage of them going with some cool voice talking about it. Yeah, I could see a whole concept about this whole thing. Just the craze of of sight fishing with the with the platform, what people do to go through to to catch a bass, and and how varying it can be from your two flip bass to your six hour marathon, you know, or or potentially turning away from a fish yeah. that you know is is a, a lifetime big bass. So, man, it's been it's been super cool. I love this conversation, Rick. But we got to move into the nitro performance bass boats listener question segment um this question actually comes through our facebook page doug crom asks this brick i want to use braid on my spinning rod with a fluorocarbon leader not quite sure how long my leader needs to be uh, that's a pretty good question man so there's actually a couple of different scenarios on your leader this kind of depends what knot you're tying if you're tying a uni to uni which is a great knot that's what i started off tying I wanted my leader, basically, you tie the knot, you reel in until that knot is about five inches above your reel, and then you want your line from the tip of your rod to your reel. You know, that's probably like 10 foot or so, maybe a little more. So just so that knot doesn't get in your spool and hit in your reel and getting all tangled up and all that. So I'd say about 10 foot if you're tying a uni to uni. Now, if you're tying an FG knot, which I learned a couple of years ago, and it's a little tougher, but that knot is the way to go you can put a 20 foot leader on because that knot can go in your spool you can make great casts with it and uh that's what i would suggest so you can get a longer leader about 20 foot or so but you know if that knot's too tricky for you at first do a uni to uni with a 10 foot leader does technique change your your leader length rick yeah it does you know it just depends you know if i'm if I'm, if I'm making cast, long cast, really clear water, uh, I'd like a long, longer leader. But, you know, if you're drop shot and, and head rigging and stuff, 10-foot leader's fine. 
Gotcha. So maybe a little bit less for vertical fishing, a little bit longer for casting. Is that yes. is that a fair statement? Okay, cool. Well, Aaron, you got anything on that? No, I mean, I think it's just very interesting because, you know, I fish a lot of at Table Rock and Bull Shoals and a lot of those highland, you know, lakes like that. And, and I would agree. I, I never liked the knot, even if I was vertical fishing. I even went out one time, Rick, and, and just uh, experimenting on vertical fishing. I'm like, I wonder what it's like to just drop shot with straight braid well they still hit it not that i'm a you know fan of doing that and and they did but yeah. but uh you know the bites definitely definitely went down i mean um you could tell that so i think that's a that's a good deal i've i've got to learn how to master the sg knot i know that it's uh yeah it's not you the easiest to tie. it's not but once you do it it's like night and day and it's i'm a totally believer in it you know there's only a few things in bass fishing where i'm like yep that's the only way to go and that's definitely one of them yeah. Well, great question there, Doug, and uh, appreciate you sending that in. But one thing that we do need from you, and that is to log on simply to BassEdge.com, click the Claim Your Prize tab, and fill out the information, letting us know that you heard Big Bass Magician, as Kurt said. Rick Harris, answer your question right here on episode 376, and we are going to get that Midway USA gift card sent directly to you where you can buy all things fishing and, of course, for what they're known for um, back in the day, anything within the outdoors and uh, shooting sports. Uh, absolutely, and and a reminder, keep firing those questions. Aaron, I, I remember way back when we did some uh, Lucas Oil gift cards or something like that I, I Auto what parts, yeah. oh riley auto parts that's yeah. what it was and uh and so so it's kind of a throwback to what we did you know five six seven years ago but uh now man fish and tackle this is great stuff so be sure to uh send in those questions so you can win the 25 dollar gift card from midway usa if your question is chosen to be on the show we're going to send you that gift card you can Put those questions out on our Instagram page or our Facebook page, or you can just DM those questions to us through those social media outlets, and we will choose those questions that are that are most appropriate for the time of year, of course. We always want to make it relative for our listeners, and uh, we'll get them out here on the show and get some great anglers like Rick Harris to answer them for you. You guys actually do pay because I did a question, I think it was – uh, probably 10 years ago, I did a question and uh, Ishman Rowe answered it and y'all sent me some O'Reilly Auto Parts gift cards. So you guys actually do pay up. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. That's that's a good thing. I appreciate you bringing that to the front. The there. validation that it actually works. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and also appreciate, you know, Rick, you just taking – and carving time out because this has a, been a very interesting conversation. And I mean, uh, what you do is epic with big fish. And certainly you, you obviously you back that up with, uh, with tournament wins and, and your support down through the years and certainly spreading your knowledge with, with Bass Edge Nation. Where can uh, listeners find your guide service and what other final remarks do you have for Bass Edge Nation? Yeah, so you can find the Hill Country Hammer Guides and Outfitters. You know, we got a Facebook page, Instagram. We have a TikTok now that's been blowing up, which is pretty cool. You know, you can just uh, direct message us. There's a phone number on there you can call to book a trip. You know, or you can find me on Instagram, Rick Harris Fishing. You can hit me up to book a trip. So that's that's the ways to find us. And you know, closing thoughts, I just I really appreciate what you guys do on Bass Edge, you know, to teach people better ways to catch bass because I learned a lot throughout the years from you guys. So that's that's awesome. And if, you know, if you're a weekend fisherman, just keep at it. Time on the water is everything. You learn so much by time on the water. You can listen to these podcasts and get all the knowledge you can, but it's not going to do any good if you're not out there on the water trying all these tactics. Very cool, Rick. Man, loved having you on the show. Great to spend some time on these airwaves. Best of luck. You are now qualified for your second Toyota championship in a row. So that's going to go down this fall at Lake Gunnersville, fishing for 200 K uh, by virtue of your Texoma win. So that's great. And uh, man, I wish you the best of luck there, obviously, but uh, I'll see you before then. Aaron Rick also helps with my uh, youth fishing camp. So uh, we'll be seeing them this summer and, and maybe posting some stuff there on Bass Edge about, uh, about our youth fishing camps as well. So, um, Great stuff, Rick. Thanks for being here. Everyone hang tight. Aaron and I will be back after a brief message from our sponsors. You know the importance of protecting your investments. So why use anything else other than the original and toughest DIY keel protector for your boat, MegaWare Keel Guard. 
Grinding sand, abrasive rocks, and concrete ramps are no match for our exclusive contoured edge and patented technology. MegaWare Keel Guard Keel Protectors are made tough and made to stick. Their do-it-yourself installation takes less than an hour, providing the longest lasting, most dependable keel protection for your boat, guaranteed for life. Developed specifically by boat builders, offering the best keel protection in the industry. Also for MegaWare Keel Guard, Skeg Guard, Flex Step Pro, and Pontoon Guard. So give your boat the performance edge. Put on the protection the pros pick. MegaWare Keel Guard. The PowerPole Charge Marine Power Management Station is the most advanced system of its kind available on the market. It does the work of three devices, a traditional battery charger, a charge on the run, and an emergency start system all in one compact unit. The charge lets you run your boat's accessories the way you want to run them by allowing you to monitor and control your power usage through the PowerPole app. It automatically devotes power to the batteries that need it the most for maximum efficiency. The new charge from PowerPole. Power where you need it, power how you need it, power when you need it. Kurt, fun episode. Started out with uh, obviously raising our technology uh, product IQ with all board <laughs> yes. marine. Um, very, very interesting. And then you got to segue right into with Rick talking about monster bass. I mean, yeah. you know, that's just like their guide services. Uh, that's, that's just crazy. <laughs> It is cool stuff, man. I, I got to say, you know, this technology thing just continues to evolve. You know, yeah, the Pickwick win a couple, you know, weeks ago with uh, John Canada there on Pickwick Lake with the MLF Pro Circuit. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the guy's catching fish on this live transducer on stumps and spawning fish and 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 this kind of system that that David mentioned earlier in the show. Pretty cool stuff, dude. And this whole electronics thing is just I don't want to say it's out of control because it's really cool, but there is just a lot going on and a lot to understand in this this movement. I would call it a movement, right? Oh, for sure. And I think we're just scratching the surface. I know you brought up and, and alluded to in David's interview with the Omnidirectional, but you know, the yeah, dollars that's yeah. behind that. But you know some version of that is probably coming to freshwater. I mean, let's let's be real. Yeah, there's involvement still coming, unbelievably, <laughs> after after all of this that we're trying to comprehend. There's more of it coming, so that's pretty cool. And uh, shout out again, like you mentioned, it's cool stuff with Rick, Big Bass, great win on the Toyota Series back in April, and uh, fun to chat with him about that and how, how that whole thing went down. And, and Jay Kumar. Actually, with Bass Blaster, I'm not sure if if the if the fans and the listeners have seen this, but uh, just there in the beginning of May, he featured Rick's guide service that he's associated with, uh, Hill Country Hammer, and uh, man, they had a platform up there catching one of those big sight fish. I think the client caught like a I don't know, a ten or eleven pounder. It's just insane, dude. What what they're doing over there, putting people on monster freaking bass, dude. It's it's uh. It's fun to watch. Another it, unique, it a very unique uh, attack. I mean, we've seen platforms in the past, right, Aaron? I mean, this is nothing new, but um, to take you know, keeping that as part of a system to just put big bass in the boat is it's not something you see every day. <laughs> no, that's right, and and it's it's very interesting to follow and 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 kind of see how they go about it, and certainly they are true. Uh, true experts of of catching big bass and you know what kurt we need to uh we're, we're five months into the year already we need to let people get out there. Right. there's plenty of, of bass fishing yet to do just want to encourage everybody be sure to uh go to bassedge.com you know uh a lot of people are using their boats right now. We talk about mega wear and boat protection all the time, but the other thing is pure clean is on there. That stuff's been flying off the shelves, which uh, helps keep the, that uh, residue hard water off of, off of those black motors and off the boats. But uh, certainly we have the Bass Edge apparel, lots of stuff there. And certainly as always stay abreast of all things Bass Edge through all of our social media and keep sending in those questions. Kurt, any final, uh, final thoughts before we close it down? Yeah, man, if you're a wild tournament angler, I just got to say, you know, I saw something uh, about a week ago with um, MLF release. They had 19 freaking tournaments in one weekend. 3,000 plus anglers competed in those uh, or maybe it was 16 tournaments. It was 16 events in one weekend. It was like, I don't know, six Phoenix Bass Fishing League events, a couple college events, a couple high school events. 
Bass Pro Tour, like the Osark Sami, dude, it was off the chain. So the ability to get out and fish is like never before. Whether you're fishing BASS, MLF, local team tournaments, dude. Or just I mean, going on the water, you know. It's, or, it's, or, uh, just, or just launch the boat to have some fun. Opportunities are endless. That's right. All right. Well, we will uh, allow people to stop listening to us and hopefully get out on the water in the near future. <laughs> but uh, June 1st, Kurt, excited to see what is uh, in store, I should say, yeah, brother. For, for that episode. As always, a pleasure being at the mic with you. Certainly thank all the Bass Edge listeners, as we know you have many choices uh, to get your bass fishing education from, and certainly appreciate spending that with us. For Kurt Dove, I am Aaron Martin. So long, everybody. We will see you in a couple weeks. See you soon. The Edge is presented by MegaWare Keel Guard. For more information on Bass Edge or to shop at the Bass Edge online store, visit BassEdge.com. And be sure to join Kurt Dove and Aaron Martin right here on another episode of The Edge. Brought to you in part by Nitro Boats, Midway USA, Mercury Marine, Power Pole, and Transport 